In this video, we'll be looking at how to create a simple um, scratch project that has to do with you busting some falling balls before they get to the ground. So let's look at how the project looks like. Click on the green flag, start the project, and your job is to click on the balls and bust uh, them before they get to the the red bar at the bottom and once they get to the red bar at the bottom the game comes to an end so let's start the project open up a fresh scratch project delete the scat sprites and get um, out the button sprite that we need you need the ball sprite you need also the button sprite like you saw in the project so scroll down to choose any of these buttons i'll choose the button three sprite so these are the two sprites you what need. you want to do now is to go to stage click on stage click on backdrops up and then duplicate backdrop one and backdrop two again duplicate such that you now have three backdrops so what you want to do on the first uh, backdrop is to write out the word start so write out start so that will be the instruction we are going to give out to our audience to start the game so now the you want button. to be as large as the word you wrote that starts word you wrote so you want to increase the size of this button to See let's go back to our stage click on backdrops and in backdrop 2 what you want to do is a rectangular bar at the bottom so click on rectangle and draw a rectangular bar at the bottom here so i prefer color red so i would change that color to this will color be the red. bar that whenever the ball touches the game comes to an end and in backdrop 3 i'm going to write game the Over. word i'll change the color to say blue now increase the size of the word of the words game over so i'll go to code still on backdrops i want to write an instruction that says when the green flag is clicked i want the first backdrop which is backdrop one to show up that is the first thing i want to achieve i want that whenever the player of this game clicks the green flag so go to looks and drag out switch to backdrop and change this to so let's one. Uh, write some codes for our sprites let's start with the button so whenever sprites. the game starts i want the button to be transparent first of all so that we can see the word start the roots in the so to the looks and i'll drag out set ghost effects to 40 let's use 45 so as you can see the button is transparent whenever i click on the green flag it's uh, transparent i'll drag the button flag to center it start over the I wrote initially so i can also choose to uh, tell my program the location i want I always want so whenever my i start this, button this project be. my button should always be at the x1 and y minus 2 location. now the next thing i want to do is to switch between costumes of this button this this button has two costumes button 3a and button 3b so i'll go to looks and i'll drag out the switch the next costume so whenever i start this project forever switch between the two costumes available for this spread now if i click on the click the green flag you can see that the switching between costumes is uh, happening very fast to slow it down i'll use the grid block so i want the switching between costumes to slow down for two the 0 0.2 seconds button 
blinks and switches between costumes and it's transparent so that I can see the world that is uh, beneath it. The next thing I want to do is to say whenever I click on the start button, I want to switch to the next backdrop. The next backdrop is this backdrop too. It's on, it's on this backdrop that our boss will begin to fall down. So let's go back to our button sprite and write more codes for button sprite. Go to events and drag out the when this when this sprite clicked. So when the sprite is clicked, I want to go to the next backdrop. So go to looks and drag out the switch to backdrop block and change to start backdrop again. Two. Click on the start button and you see that the backdrop switches to the second backdrop. But the issue I'm having is that the button is still there. I want a situation whereby whenever I click on the button sprite, the button disappears. The button should disappear and that will be the time when the other boss will begin to fall. So I can choose to say, go to looks and put the eye Let's okay. start the game. Click on the green flag. As you, you can, can see, start. the button disappears. But I see doing this. a different way of Whenever I click on the green flag and I switch to the second backdrop, I can choose to broadcast a message to not just this button sprite but other uh, sprite. The use of the block is for you to be able to write some code for other sprites when something happens to a particular sprite. So when I click on this um, button sprite, I want to send a message to other sprites that they should take action. So the action, I will change message one to a so new. The message. message I'm sending out is that there is a switch to backdrop two. When I receive, drag out when I receive um, the message, which is switch to backdrop two, then I should hide myself. The button sprite should well, hide because you are Writing an instruction for the button sprite to hide itself. You should it's ensure also, that it should show up itself at the beginning of the game. Because if you hide button sprite the, along the line, you should also ensure that it should show up at the beginning of the game. So also, I want to send a message to the boss sprite that when it also receives the message of um, switch to backdrop to it should show up itself that's when i want my button sprite to show up now if i start the game as you can see my boss sprite is showing up and i don't want my boss boss sprite to show up what i want to do to now, the boss sprite is that whenever i start the game i want the boss sprite to be hidden go to looks and drag out the id the show up when I've sent this broadcast uh, message, this broadcast that I've, um, that I've switched to the second bar drop and that's when the boss should show up. So when, go to the boss sprite and drag out the when I switch to bar drop two. So when I switch to bar drop two, I want the ball to show up. Go to loops and drag out the show block. So let's click on the green flag and let's see what happens. As you can see, the ball disappears on clicking the start button. So when I click on the the button, start button, the ball appears. When I click on the green flag, the ball disappears. Then when I click on the start button, the ball appears on the second slide. So the next thing is for the instructions to write for the ball to fall. To fall so down. for the ball to fall down, that has no emotion. So we are going to set a Y and X position. For I want to set the ball Y to 200. Y to 200 is at the top here. So it's at the top here. Then Y, I want to set Y between Go to operators and drag out the pick random block. I want to set y between 250 and minus 250.
My, my ball should start from somewhere here for my y and for my x it should be anywhere between between here and here so my ball can choose to fall anywhere between these two points so that's why i'm setting x to a random number of 250 and minus 250 so set y also to 200 so for your ball to fall you need to change y continuously you need to reduce your y so to reduce your y go to motion and drag out the change y by two, by a negative figure to make it reduce um, and fall down so changing y by minus 20 we will only reduce 200 to 180 but i want the ball to go down gradually so i would use minus 20 and i'll repeat the process of the reduction of y go to control and drag out the repeat a block i want to repeat the reduction of y by minus 20 20 times so if i click on this code see what happens unlike what we had before it it, it fell very fast and it's still falling very fast to reduce the falling process i would use the weight block see i want to reduce make the process of the ball falling down reduced i'll use the weight block click on this code and see what happens you can see that the, the falling of the ball is uh, reduced it's not as fast as before but still not what i want i'll make the number of seconds to be 0 0.2 you can join the code to the previous one so i think it is working now so what we want to do also is to write instructions for the ball to disappear when it is clicked on go to event drag out the when this sprite is clicked when i click on the ball the ball should fall from the top down again well this instruction is the instruction given for the ball to fall so i will duplicate this instruction and put it here so, but this instruction should happen forever whenever i click on the ball i want the ball to fall again from the top every time so i'll go to control and drag out the forever block and wrap it over the code let's start the game and see what happens click on the start button so whenever i click on this uh, ball you can see that it will start from the top again we want a situation whereby whenever the ball touches the the red bar at the bottom the game should come to an end what we are going to do now is to write an instruction that says if drag out and that should happen forever if the go to sensing and drag out touching color if this sprite touches the red colored bar at the bottom so click on this icon and select the color you want i want this color so whenever the ball touches the uh, bar at the bottom you want the game to come to an end so that will mean us switching to the third bar drop that says game over so go to looks and drag out the switch to backdrop block and change it to backdrop 3 so whenever the ball touches the red bar at the bottom the game should uh, come to an end by switching to the to backdrop 3 and i can also choose to broadcast a message so go to events and broadcast another message the message I want to broadcast should be game over because I want to send a message not just to this particular sprite but other sprites that they should also take action whenever if a ball touches the the red line so this particular ball should hide itself so also other balls should also hide themselves so game over
when I receive the message game over, I want the ball to be hidden. Go to looks and drag out the eye block. So let's check out how it looks. Click on the green flag, click on the start uh, button, bust your balloons. So the ball touches the red line and it does not say anything. That's because I've not wrapped, I've not joined this screw together. Let's join this screw. So let's start again. So let, let's see what happens when the ball touches the red line and the game says game over okay now this ball has five costumes so i will, have, I will duplicate this ball five times and change the color of this ball to the different costumes that we have so let me specify the costume for this ball so go to looks drag out the switch to costume so let's have costume A for this ball. Whenever I receive the message that the backdrop has been switched to the second backdrop, backdrop 2, I do I want to wait for some time before the ball falls? So let's see. Go to control, drag out wait. So now, well, I don't want to wait any number of seconds before the ball starts dropping. Maybe for other balls, I will have to, I have to put a wait, a waiting time, so that the balls don't fall down at the same time. So let's look at what happens here now. Start. So it's working as expected. I also want the situation whereby I will be able to. Show the number of times I've clicked on the on the balls. So I want to create a variable. Click on make a variable and title it score. Click OK. Now I want this score um, variable to show up not on the first slide. We have the start button, but on the second slide. So I should also I will need to use the when I receive the switch to backdrop to block. When I receive the go to backdrop to block, I want the variable to be hidden initially. So I want the variable to be initial, the score variable to be hidden initially. So it should show up when I. No, no, no. When I start the, the the game, actually, that's when I want the variable to be uh, hidden. So when it switches to the next uh, backdrop, that's when it should show up. So click on show variable. When it goes to the next backdrop, show variable. Whenever I click on those doors and they disappear, I want to always increase my variable by one. So change variable by one. So that will, that, that will come with a condition. When the sprite is clicked, I want to change the variable by one. So I will need the when sprite clicked. So when sprite click, I want to always change the variable by one. When the game starts all over again, I want to always set it to a zero. So go to variables and set the variable to zero when the green flag is clicked change my variable to score variable so when the green flag is click i want to hide my variable and set it to zero and when i when i receive the switch to backdrop to message i want to show my variable when the sprite is clicked i want to increase my score variable by one so let's see what happens click on the green flag and start your game as you click on your balls the the score increases by one every time and when the ball touches the red line the game comes to an end 
So that's all we need to create this project. What's left is for us to duplicate this boss. I want there to be waiting time of 3 seconds so that the balls don't fall down at the same time. And I want to change the costume of this ball to B so that they have a different uh, color. So let's see how it works for two balls. Click on the green flag and click on the start button. So game over. Let's see that again. So game over. Okay, so it's working. So I'll duplicate this boss several times, and I'll change the costume of this one to to costume ball C. Change change it to costume ball C, and change the time it will start falling to six seconds, so that the balls don't fall down at the same time. Change this to duplicate this one again. Change this to custom ball D and change the waiting time to 9 seconds. Duplicate again. Change this to ball E and change the waiting time to 12 seconds. So let's click on the green flag and see what happens. Start the game. Oh, it's falling too so fast. Okay, game over. So after it says game over, the purple ball falls. It's not supposed to fall. But the purple ball falls even after it says game over. So what you can do is to to forcefully stop the balls from falling. I, I can't think of any other thing right now, but I think if we use go to control and uh, use the stop all stop all code it should should work stop all so add stop all to everything under the id the id block So let's start the game and see what happens. Game over. So the ball does not fall down again. So that's uh, uh, it's working now. So that's our project. So, like I said before, your goal is to continuously click on the balls, those falling balls, and when the the ball touches the red line, the game comes to an end. So, take care.